Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs. Two in one day, what do you know? Anyway, right, so here in the UK, the political situation is becoming quite interesting. Um, after the recent election in May, uh, the party leaders for the parties who lost basically gave up their jobs. You know, uh, Nick Clegg gave up his job, Ed Miliband gave up his job, and Nigel Farage gave up his job for about a week and a half and then took it back again. But that's neither here nor there for this video. Now there's a contest for the leadership of the Labour Party, and there are four declared candidates, uh, three of whom are relatively establishment candidates, and one of whom is apparently seen as a sort of old school, red under the bed, uh, socialist labor uh, guy and his name is Jeremy Corbyn and I read the independent which is a definitely left of center uh, newspaper and even the independent has been going into apoplexy about the possibility of Jeremy Corbyn becoming the leader of the Labor Party there's a definite campaign in British media right now to sort of smear Jeremy Corbyn and to make people think that if Jeremy Corbyn is leader of the Labour Party, that Labour has no chance of getting into power whatsoever in the next election or possibly even the election after that. They compare him to Michael Foote back in the 80s when Michael Foote was leading the Labour Party um, and lost to Margaret Thatcher in 1983. Well, I've got some things to say about Jeremy Corbyn. Nothing about him as a politician personally or his policies, but just about the reaction to Jeremy Corbyn. You see, I've been around the sun a few times now and I can to me certain things when I when I when I, I don't just read the media or watch news or read the newspapers or whatever and just take it as read that what they're saying is the whole story and I fancy myself to have learned to recognize media campaigns when I see them and uh, this anti Corbin campaign in the media is blatantly obvious to me because since Jeremy Corbyn announced his uh, candidacy for the Labour Party, the Labour Party has had 400,000 new people sign up to become members so that they can vote in the Labour election. Now, what the press is doing with that number is spinning it to saying that these people are all joining the Labour Party because they are coming from other parties like possibly Tories or maybe Green Party voters or whatever, and they want to... Uh, get Jeremy in, into office so that that screws labor up forever. They call them entryists, and they say that these people are entering the party um, specifically to wreck it. Uh, you know, there may be an element of that, but I find it amusing because under the leadership of Tony Blair for labor, and subsequently Gordon Brown as the labor leader, um, hundreds of thousands of people left the labor party because it no longer represented their interests. So from my point of view, it seems obvious that a lot of those people who left the Labour Party because the Labour Party was no longer a left of center workers party, which was how it was founded, um, you know, they, they left. And now they see the possibility of a leader who wants to bring the party back to the membership. And all of a sudden, that's a bad thing um, in the press's eyes. But I think that has an awful lot. I think that goes a long way to explaining why people are signing up to Labour. I think a lot of these people are re-enlisting as labor voters. They had given up on labor and now they want another shot because they see that there's a candidate who might actually represent their interests. And to all the people uh, in the press who are sort of slamming Jeremy Corbyn and saying that he's you know too much of a left of center socialist type thinker to actually get elected by the population, y'all don't seem to realize how politics works. Okay, if you get enough people to agree with your message it doesn't really matter what your message is, it will be a vote winner if you can get people to agree to it. And this idea that it's a fait accompli that the British population will never agree to those types of ideas ever again is ridiculous. Uh, you know, these things can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, if you tell people long enough, you know, that uh, there's no way that these ideas will float, then they might come to believe it. But quite frankly, I think that the surge in popularity for Jeremy Corbyn is due to the fact that people don't like the status quo and would vote, would have voted Labour in the most recent election had Labour represented their interests. So now they want back in because maybe Labour will represent their interests. Why is that a bad thing? Why is democracy working a bad thing? Even if Labour doesn't get to become the government in the next election, 
That shouldn't be the issue. It shouldn't be about getting in government. It should be about representing the wishes and the values and desires of the people in your constituency, the members of your party. That's what it should be about. If the leadership doesn't represent the membership, they've got no business being in government. That's my opinion. I want to thank you for watching this video. I look forward to your ideas and comments down below. And until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.